May I speak to the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Who knows what a paradox is? The definition of a paradox is a sentence or phrase that contains two opposite or self-contradictory facts. When I was a child, I had a book that contained various rhymes and poems. This was one in it. You might have heard it before, or a variation of it. One bright morning in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. A deaf policeman heard the noise, came and arrested those two dead boys. Every line of that verse is a paradox. It cannot be bright morning in the night. You cannot face someone if you're back to back with them. You can't shoot someone with a sword and so on. Something else remembered from my childhood was my parents' quite different taste in music. As a youngster, my mum's music seemed either cheesy, Cliff Richard or Abba, or a bit dull and the Carpenters. My dad's music always seemed a bit livelier and singers were a bit more interesting, such as Elton John and Queen. There were a few groups they both liked though, and among them was Simon and Garfunkel. One of their more popular songs is called The Sound of Silence. I'll repeat that, The Sound of Silence. The title amused me even as a child. Surely there can't be any sound in a silence. Silence is the absence of sound. The song title can be classed as a paradox. If at any point in this service we were to announce a moment of silence, what would we hear? Could we actually all be totally silent or would there still be some noise? Perhaps a sneeze or a cough? Perhaps the children moving about when they're here? Perhaps someone fidgeting in their seat? Or a noise seeping in from outside? Once we stop fidgeting and get comfortable, there shouldn't actually be much else to hear. Let us try for a few moments not to make any sound in church. Okay, you're actually all better at that than I thought you would be. Well done. But noise isn't just about the literal noises we hear. The term mental noise is sometimes used to describe our thoughts. And if we have busy minds with many ideas going round and round in our heads, it can be hard to switch off from them, hard to concentrate on one particular thing at a time. If I called for quiet again now, would you be able to clear your mind as well of mental noise? Or would you still have thoughts of cooking the dinner, tasks you've got to complete at work tomorrow, or what's in your diary for the week ahead still be in your mind? Or could you cast them all out? Let us have an, another few moments of silence, but this time within yourselves, aiming for no mental noise as well. As our world has become busier and more rushed, silence can set off different feelings in people. Some people are afraid of silence. If you change hairdresser, do you feel like you don't know him or her as well as your last one and you don't know how to start up a conversation with them? Maybe you're at a meeting and they ask for a volunteer to do something and no one speaks up or raises their hand. Instead, everyone looks down and hope they don't get picked to do it. Those are awkward silences. What about the single parent who puts their child to bed then doesn't see anyone until the next day? Or the person who has just moved to a new town hasn't yet made friends and sits alone in their apartment every evening. Silence can be lonely. On the other hand, what about when you've rushed around on a Saturday, doing your shopping, met a friend for lunch, spent a couple of hours playing with the grandchildren, then tidying up after them. Finally, when all the jobs are done, the house is quiet again, and you can sit down on the sofa with a cup of tea and relax, and maybe even nod off for a while. That's a relaxing, even enjoyable silence. What do we do when we find ourselves in a period of silence? Personally, I don't mind being surrounded by quiet. I can sit and read or sew without any noise around me. But what if you are someone who doesn't like silence, if you find it awkward or lonely or depressing? Do you rush to put the television or radio on as soon as you get in the house? 
or start chatting nonsense to cover a, a lulling conversation with others? Do you spend ages on the phone to friends or find yourselves inventing chores to keep busy? But what if we were to use silence for something specific? I don't mean listening out for whether the children are still awake in the bedroom next door or if the dog needs to go outside. What if we use our moments of silence to listen for God's voice? Not just here in church during the intercessions, not just when we sit back down after communion, but wherever and whenever we are still and quiet. Whether in those moments just as we awake, when we sit down to relax after a long day at work, or when we get into bed at the end of the day, or any number of moments in between, we should be spending some time actively seeking periods of silence for the purpose of talking to and listening for God. But what does God sound like? Are we going to realise it is him talking to us? When Samuel heard a voice calling him in the silence of the temple at night, he thought it was the priest Eli calling to him. If they were the only two people in the temple, surely that would have been the obvious thing for Samuel to think. And so three times he got up from his own bed and went to Eli's bedside, and it was only on the third time that Eli realised what was happening, that it was God calling Samuel, and told him, Go and lie down again, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel did not know it was God speaking to him, despite living and serving in the temple. He was not prepared for or expecting to hear God's voice calling to him. He wasn't the priest. He was just a young lad serving in the temple. But then again, even Eli didn't understand what was happening to start with. How then can we expect to recognise God speaking to us? More importantly, are we going to be ready for him? What would have happened if Moses, as he led the Israelites out of Egypt, had said, Sorry God, I'm too busy trying to deal with all these people to listen to you right now. Would they have got to the promised land? Or if Eli had told Samuel to, Stop making things up, let me sleep. Would Samuel have become the prophet that he later became in his life? Or what about Mary? If she had told the angel Gabriel, sorry, I'm too busy doing my chores, come back later, would we be here now? All these people were ready for God, their hearts and minds open to him. Are we in the same position? Advent is a time of preparation, of looking forward, hopefulness. Through the Christmas story, we prepare ourselves, along with Mary, for the birth of Jesus Christ. We look forward with hope to the day he comes among us again. So this is a good opportunity to prepare our hearts and minds to hear God speaking to us, to look forward to hearing his voice. We can all live in hope of him calling us to do his will. We need to be ready for the unexpected. We need to be ready for the whisper or the roar of God's voice. We need to be ready to hear him call us when we're out for an afternoon walk or in the quiet of the night. We need to be ready to change our lifestyle or our plans to do whatever God asks us. We need to listen to the sound of silence, to be ready for God calling us. We need to be ready to reply, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Amen.